Okay, so good morning once again. Good to see all of you. Um, hope you all had a pleasant week and uh, we'll have an even more blessed week coming forward. All right, so welcome to all our e-learning students as well. Thank you for those who are regularly tuning in and joining and completing your course on time. We appreciate your commitment. Uh, we uh, uh, want to stand with you to encourage you. And also, all of you students online, um, just a reminder before we get started that the, that the assessment is due today. So I think uh, many of you have completed it, but there are still a few more who needs to um, complete the assignment. So after class, uh, I request that you take it. It'll probably take you maybe less than 10, 15 minutes. Your classmates have done very well. Uh, I don't know if the paper was that easy, but then I think I'll take it to the latter and say that all of you all have paid a lot of attention as well as, uh, you know, gone through your notes and done it prayerfully. So I'll go with the second one. All right, let's uh, just get started with the word of prayer and uh, we'll move forward. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your mercies and your grace is new every morning. Thank you that we are recipients of your faithfulness today. Lord, we stand in awe of who you are. Lord, even as we get together in class, learning another aspect of marriage, Father, we pray, God, that you will open our hearts, you will pour in to us, draw out from us all the chaff, and Lord, replace it with the truth of your word. Father, for those of us who are in marriages, we pray that uh, you will work in our relationships, in our marriages, to make us to be who you would like us to be. Father, for those of us who may be struggling through our relationships, we look to you as the perfecter and author of our faith and know, God, that you perfect all things in your time. Bless this time of learning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we've been um, going through the elements of, uh, uh, of a good marriage and uh, we've come to the next part, the next um, element of, uh, of what does it mean to have a good marriage. And for you to just follow along, I am on page um, 100. And we are going to be looking at teamwork or how is it that, um, what does it mean to be a team uh, in marriage? What uh, does it entail? Uh, what is the power of a team? And what are some practical perspectives on how a husband and wife can become a strong team for the purposes of God and his kingdom on earth? Okay, so I'm on page 100, uh, and we are going to be uh, doing uh, becoming a team, right? Okay, so um, maybe to get started with, I think, you know, just for us to have a warm up, like how we would do if we are to, you know, exercise. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have been part of teams, different kinds of teams, right? It could be a sports team could be a cultural team, it could be a work team, um, it could be just maybe a couple of friends getting together uh, as a team to do something. It could be a, a team at church, a youth group team who's working together on something, all right? Now, and I'm sure each one of us have had the opportunity to be part of some team or the other, okay? So I'd like to hear from you or, you know, could good to have you all put it up on the chat as well, as to what have you learned about being in a team as against, or, or what do you think gets accomplished uh, while being in a team as against being alone? What do you think has been accomplished by being in a team as against being alone? Yes, Shay, good to hear you. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. 
Um, so what I've, what I've learned being in a team as against the loan is burden is being shared, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody takes different responsibility. And so you can easily effectively execute your own part of the um, a, a portion of whatever objective you're, you've set to do. Mm-hmm. Apart from that, you get to learn again, just being in a team, different mm-hmm how people have different experiences from people, how people are able to achieve things. Mm -hmm. And that also you can learn and apply into your life. So one Mm -hmm. is burden is being eased. Number two Mm -hmm. is the things you are able to learn just by working in a team, things that you will never have known if you never Mm -hmm. worked with people of different backgrounds from different walks Mm -hmm. of life. So yeah, those are two things I think um, for me, uh, yeah. Thank you. That 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 was wonderful. Thank you, Shay. That that was great. Thank you. Yes, Charles. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor. Um, someone said that when you want to go very fast, you go alone. But when you want to go very far, you go with others. Meaning that uh, <clears throat> you when you are alone, you you can get tired. You can. You, you, I have seen it at home when I'm doing things alone, when I've kept quiet, I've not shared, uh, mm-hmm. they suck, it sucks. But when mm-hmm. I've shared, I feel released, I, I feel okay, and then I know uh, I am having people with me. Mm-hmm. I, I am giving an example of, of preparing the weekly or monthly menu for the family, and I have involved mm-hmm. my children, and I've involved my wife, and everyone mm-hmm. gives in their input. Wow, mm-hmm. the things mm-hmm. become okay. And even when it is prepared, mm-hmm. nobody is complaining because we already know what is happening. So I am seeing it that when we are a team, we achieve more. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. That's so true. I think uh, Shay and Charles brought up uh, some very valid points of burden being shared, um, work being done together, appreciations happening as a result. Wonderful. Kennedy? I think my most interesting experience is working with a weak team player. Working with a weak team player, where it really calls you to humble yourself, do everything in humility and understanding and accepting the way they are. And also learn to encourage them to bring them to a level where you can perform together as one. Thank you. Okay. I I think, uh, yeah, so I think he said how you, uh, he said how, in the team, you know, I think it was a sports team he was referring to, of how you encourage one another and, uh, you know, learn so much from each other. Wonderful. Prabhakar has said, in a team, our weaknesses is backed up by the strength of others. Absolutely. All right. Anyone else would like to uh, comment on the team? Why? What? What do you achieve by being in a team as against being alone? Anyone else? I'd like to hear some more responses. Uh, my response uh, would be uh, by working at team. Uh, we will uh, not uh, consider uh, uh, individual as a uh, work in the team. It was uh, it was uh, also a base condenser and as a whole team. Our very very goal uh, is uh, achieving. Uh, uh, as a whole team, uh, matter, um, uh, no matter uh, what uh, uh, cancer, uh, whole family, uh, cancer, um, <clears throat> uh, cancer, uh, so uh, uh, sports uh, activity, uh, and <clears throat> um, <clears throat> they were. Uh, several chlorine uh, and attack uh, uh, backup uh, uh, one one store uh, backup um, 
ஆப்சலூட்லி <laughs> uh rupa we can pool individual strengths to achieve our common goal yes wonderful so i think uh, uh okay there's somebody else also who mentioned uh teamwork maxin has said teamwork you uh in teamwork i learn skill from friends easier yes okay so we pick up a lot more of uh uh gifts and uh, skills from them wonderful okay so um we since we've all been part of a team um okay then kennedy also has said learning to work under my bosses with respect and good communication skills yes so working as a team together definitely requires that there are certain um uh skills like uh respect good communication that needs to be um uh, enhanced uh, prabhaka has said team oh okay he's given an acronym oh that's so cool together everyone achieves or accomplishes more oh that's nice okay that's nice together achieves and accomplishes more okay lovely all right okay so um when we look at marriage uh, in itself you know this is the, i think the smallest team that you can uh, that that uh, is there in society the husband and wife are ones who make a team and they need to work together as a team in order to run uh not just a home but many things that are attached to them coming together so when you know that you have someone on your side you can you can call on when you think you need to do something on your own you know think of a task that you're given like especially you know when you're given um group activities it's so much more um uh stronger because like thing like somebody said the weaknesses of one does not get enhanced but the strength of everyone is what is actually shown up so the weakness of one gets uh you know gets minimized through the strength of the team right so uh, a husband and wife team together is something that is very powerful uh, because you can overcome many things that will come together now life is going to throw different challenges at us and trying and attempting to do this on our own can become um physically draining emotionally taxing and also you know you're you're at a greater place for attacks also when you may be uh, you know spiritually and and i'll give you references to what what i just said so what we are going to be exploring through this chapter is we're going to see what why is a team this powerful okay what are some of the things that um uh, some of the benefits that happen as as a result of being a good team we're going to also be looking at the other side what are some hindrances or some obstacles that make a good team and also we're going to be looking at certain practical perspectives of how a strong team can work for the um for for the purposes of god okay so we we're, we're going to highlight two scriptures as we're going to be looking at this and i'm at page 100 so if somebody can open up 
page 100. There are two scriptures on that page. There is Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, and Matthew 18, 19 to 20. So if two of you could just take turns to read it, that'll be wonderful. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Shall I read? Sure, Abni, go ahead. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12 says, Two are better off than one, because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone and falls, it's just too bad, because there is no one to help him. If it is cold, two can sleep together and stay warm. But how can you keep warm by yourself? Two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. A rope made of three cords is hard to break. Thank you, Amni. Matthew 18, 19 to 20. Somebody else could, could take a turn to read that. Okay, Matthew 18, 19 to 20. Uh, and I tell you more, whenever two of you on earth agree about anything you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, I am there with them. Thank you. Thank you, Tarun. All right. So these two scriptures, you know, although they do not refer directly or are specific to marriage, we still can take principles from it because um, it, it talks about two. It talks about the power of two. Okay. So uh, what we are looking at is trying to find and see what, uh, what enhances um, a, a team or what, what is it that, what, what is it that comes out of a team. So when you look at this first scripture in Ecclesiastes, it says very clearly, two are better off than one. And it says, because, so one of the things that you see is they work more efficiently, they work effectively. So, you know, there are many things even in our own um, physical body that helps us see how much the principle of teamwork brings about efficiency now for example you know god's given us two hands and thank god that we have two a pair of hands we should talk to someone who has only a single hand right and what the struggle that they go through to complete maybe even a simple task maybe like brushing their teeth right and if you see the way the Lord has made our bodies, it is so well coordinated, right? That it, let's say even if when you want to brush your teeth, your left hand knows what it needs to do. Your right hand knows what it needs to do, right? Both of them don't go for the toothbrush together, right? Maybe one's taking the toothbrush, one's taking the paste, right? And maybe when you're, one's opening the tap, the other one's collecting the water, Right, the ones brushing their teeth, the other ones, you know, straightening the hair. So that's that's what God made our very bodies to be, also. And and it's similar in in every um, you know every part of our bodies which has two of it. Uh, you you can look at your legs and you know maybe your eyes. In this part of the eyes is able to see this side of the vision. This part of the eye is able to see that side of the vision. And as a result, you are able to collectively see things together. So scripture says that together you can work more efficiently or be more effective. And so together the husband and wife definitely has a greater influence and has a greater measure of success when they work together in any sphere or aspect of life, may, uh, be it things at home, things uh, at work, things maybe dealing with other people, um, with, with the things of ministry or the work of God, everything together becomes more effective. Okay, when we look at verse 10 in Ecclesiastes 4, it says, if one falls down, the other can help up right help him up so it is true 
that both may not stand in strength every time. So there can be times when one falls down and this falls down could be in any way. It is just even, you know, having a bad headache or just having a flu. And you know that your, your, your home is not going to break down, but there is someone who is going to take up for you, help you up. So you're not alone in needing to manage uh, maybe the, the issues or the things at home, okay? Um, as against one who would be fall sick and not have anyone to help him, right? So there is always a support when one is weak. And so even if we look at it in, let's say, in, in a state of a, a, a spiritual fall or even an emotional fall, there is one who helps and picks and encourages them to stand back on their feet. Okay, verse um, 11, again, the part of it, it says, you provide support and encouragement when things are difficult. So that's the, um, that's the power of, of two people. Uh, you know, each of us can think about times when we are going through um, maybe some struggle. The more that you um, attempt to ruminate about this in your own mind, it gets very, very cluttered in your head. You know, it's very confusing. There are many thoughts. But when you get someone, maybe it's a spouse or it's a friend or, um, you know, uh, someone who you connect with well, just sharing those thoughts brings about a lot more of clarity. And there is someone who helps to encourage you and pulls you up so that you can keep going on, on, the, on the way that, that has been challenging. Right. So verse 12 again says two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. Right. And here this is where we know that there is when there are two people who come together. And that's also highlighted in the next verse where when two people come together in prayer, you know, we know that the presence of the Lord is there uh, in, in their midst. It will be done because when two or three are gathered, he is there in their midst. So when there are two people together, there is greater strength and there is a greater power to resist um, any form of an attack. It also is written in scripture, one of us can put a thousand to flee and two of us can send the legions fleeing, right? So, so two has greater strength to uh, to resist the power and the attack of the enemy or any kind of pressure that there may be. Okay, um, we do see in Matthew <clears throat> one of the, uh, uh, I think the clauses, I'd say it like a clause, it says, um, uh, if you look at verse 19, it says, and I tell you, uh, tell you more, whenever two of you on earth agree, and I think that's the key word. When you agree, you are bringing in the power of God into operation. When you agree, you see, in reference to this verse, a success in prayer or success in what you are seeking God for. And as well as not just prayer, but you also see his presence. You also take along with you his presence. So not just not just being, in, uh, you know, when you agree, it's not just the power that there are of two people, but you see great things happen in prayer and you're also carrying the presence of God uh, uh, alongside with you. Okay, so coming together as a team, when uh, when the husband and the wife, and now this is not something that happens automatically, but it is something that you work on building. You work on developing that that oneness or that that teamwork that you see, because when you are able to come together, you will find that there there's a lot more of things that are achieved. Um, in, in every area of life, okay? So uh, this, when we're talking about this power of two, this, uh, this brings about that power of togetherness that is on 
your your lives or on your marriages and and just no, knowing and understanding that there is this togetherness is um, uh, greatly affects not just what you do but also affects who you are it affects your personal uh, you know your personal strength it affects your confidence it affects your emotional well-being it affects your mental well-being it affects your spiritual well-being and when i was in school i was part of a uh, of a coco team you know I, i don't know if you all have heard the game called coco where there are dodgers and uh, runners or catchers i think that's what it's called like i can't remember but it's it's a team of nine and uh, you know you sit um uh, on the floor on the ground uh, face opposite each other and uh, and a dodger from the other team runs around and the catchers are uh, are supposed to be catching these dodgers and um, you know you would think in sport that uh, every uh, that the taller people are better sports people right but actually in this game the dodgers you know if you are shorter and faster uh you know you have a greater um uh what do you say it, it's you don't get caught as easily because especially at the ends of the uh, you know at, at at the ends of where you're being seated yeah you're at an advantage thank you thank you charles that was the word i was looking for so when you are shorter especially at the end of the um, you know where you're seated there's a pole and if it is a shorter person you know you can easily dodge because you don't have long legs but if you have long legs or long hands and they dangle around your you know that's your easily uh, want to be caught so in that in in a game such as that just knowing that there are different people with different strengths and just being together is a great way to um uh, to have uh, have victory right so similarly even when we're looking at marriage we bear and understand that that just knowing that being together in itself has a great impact not just on the way that you feel or the way that you you um you know maybe doing something or the confidence that you have but it also impacts your emotional health it impacts the way um, you you grow spiritually just knowing that there's an extra person with you okay the team also is a blessing to the children of the home it becomes a blessing to to the home um and to the family at large and uh it the children who grow up in homes which are um which have good uh, parents as team players they begin to see how working as a team is such um such a wonderful thing and this not only just sets an example for them about teamwork but also about the way a home needs to run you know a smaller unit with different members need to run so uh, it it impacts the lives of the children it impacts also their destiny forward okay as a husband and wife also becomes a good team one of the greatest advantages is that they are able to serve god in his purposes together they become more effective in the way that they serve god and um lots can be seen you know together when they are able to bring about the the kingdom of god through maybe different gifts and callings that god has placed in their lives but the way that they use it together blend it together to work or uh, uh, work to uh, as a team okay now we'll quickly move on to what are some of the hindrances of becoming a good team so uh, a lot of times um you know scripture says that and and that that scripture is given here on page 101 in mark 325 it says a house that's divided against itself will not stand okay so if there is a husband and wife who are not for each other uh and you know in very many ways are being competitive or are being bad players of a team you will see that it is definitely going to impact the outcome of their togetherness okay and that marriage is going to dwindle or it is going to disintegrate so let's have a look at what are some of those factors that cause 
uh, hindrances? What, what could be some of those obstacles for becoming a, a, a team? So the first one put here is self-preservation. Now, self-preservation, as the word, uh, as the word says, and as the, it's it's simple to understand, that you do everything to preserve your interests or keep intact whatever is uh, personal to you. That's self-preservation. Okay, always wanting to ensure to take care of everything that belongs to them, not just materially, but in all sense of the way. It could be to do with, um, uh, you know, maybe your possessions, you know, you don't like sharing something with your partner or you don't like to, you know, you have your finances are kept as, as um, you know, his and mine. All right. Uh, it's called the, it's called the mine and uh, your money, my money. Okay, and I'm sure um, we've heard that in very many, uh, you know, homes where they say, okay, this is not my money. You do, you take it from your money. What I need to give my parents, I'll take from my money, right? So this your money, my money mentality uh, is something that, that indicates a preservation, okay? So if this self-preservation is a motive, it becomes an intention, we can see that the larger picture of the marriage or the or the team is not going to function well okay uh, as a couple you need to consciously see things as ours rather than mine or yours and look at everything as being common to be able to give an importance to the other's interests just as much as they would give you give you the importance, right? So self-preservation can be one of the biggest uh, hindrances to having a good team. Okay, the next one is being selfish. Selfish is when uh, either either or both of the partners in the marriage focus on their own interests instead of doing something that can be beneficial for the larger family. And over here, we see that the self becomes primary, the team becomes secondary, or, you know, it's not, not something that uh, exists either. So maybe as an example, let's say, you know, maybe one of the uh, spouses in the marriage has got an opportunity for something, all right? Uh, whereas the other spouse probably requires um, to be opportunity maybe to travel to another another state or another country whereas the other spouse has a need to be there because of maybe whatever certain aspects that that's important to the family maybe it's a kid's education or there may be young children or you know whatever the dynamics of the family may be so uh, one the, the partner who who selfishly desires to take over their own interests instead of looking at the family or at the team as a priority could be acting in a state of selfishness. So what we are looking at is the family or the home needs to be given its rightful importance, should be given its due and all other personal interests and ambitions should wo should work around this one um, uh, around the home right so rather than looking up at your personal interests looking for ways in which you can enhance the home rather than uh, your own personal interests okay another hindrance is competition okay? when you see your husband or your wife as a competitor where you're constantly trying to do better than the other person. And that leads to an extremely unhealthy competition. And we've all seen that, you know, as children, where we wanted to do better than someone else, you know, wanted to be first rather than, um, you know, we've all, we've all, we know what that, what that means. And seeing our spouse uh, uh, as a team player uh, is what's important rather than looking at them as an enemy or as an opponent because that's what's going to help to build the marriage. So in being in competition 
can be one that is going to disintegrate the marriage. And certain examples I can think of also is in the way or the amount um, that people earn, the salaries that the husband and the wife earns, right? Or the positions that they assume in their workplaces or even even in ministry, you know, where are you in ministry? Where am I in ministry? And and what seems to be the divide between between us? So that is something that can absolutely hinder the um uh the marriage right the next one is pride okay pride of course is downfall so having the attitude of being better off or being uh, good um can cause uh, a disintegrate uh, disintegration in the marriage in itself okay any form of a thought or an attitude that I am better off than someone or than my than my spouse can lead to uh, to to a lot of strife and as a result there can be uh, the, um, the team in itself doesn't function. So the the importance is to be able to know just like we spoke about you know when we set the roles that we are equals and co heirs right so knowing that we are equal in everything maybe we have different strengths and weakness but we do not lord it over ourselves to think more highly than we ought so pride can be uh, can be again a deterrent to being a good team the next one is being uh, blaming instead of taking responsibilities. So here, especially at times of conflicts, the minute that we push blame onto the other without finding fault of uh, uh, about ourselves is something that can make conflict resolution hard, right? So the, what what you're looking is if if someone uh, if there is a conflict we look at the conflict not as something the other person has to resolve but how we as a team needs to resolve it so so her problem becomes my problem or his problem becomes my problem and we work together as one all because he created the problem he's not the only one to come out of it but i join alongside with him to be a solution ra rather than being a person who blames and that brings us to the next point of how we need to be more focused on finding solutions rather than being looking back and only identifying the problems so the more that we only look at the problems we tend to get into the rabbit hole of finding who's to blame so keeping away all of that and just working towards solutions gives a better uh, way of working towards a conflict and that's what really makes it a better team so when we look at the hindrances we've spoken about self-preservation selfishness competition pride um, uh, taking on blaming instead of responsibility and uh, focusing on problems rather than finding a solution okay uh, do we have any questions here we have around five minutes and um, we could quickly pick up some questions okay all right then i'll i'll keep going um, so we're going to be looking at at what is it that makes a um, a good husband and wife team okay we're going to be looking at certain elements that really builds a good husband and wife team so may i request one of you to uh, turn to page 101 and um, read the verse 102 sorry and read the verse psalm 133 verses 1 to 3 psalm 133 verses 1 to 3 could somebody read that loud please Psalm 133, 1 to 3. How wonderful it is, how pleasant for God's people to live together in harmony. It is like the precious anointing oil running down from Aaron's head and beard, down to the collar of his robes. It is like the dew on mountain, Mount Hermon, falling on the hills of Zion. That is where the Lord has promised his blessing life that never ends amen okay 
Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Okay, so if you look at the, these verses, there's a lot of examples or, um, you know, analogies that, uh, uh, that um, uh, towards unity. So they, they make analogies, the psalmist is making certain analogies as to what happens when uh, people are in a place of unity and in a place of harmony. So we see uh, w one of the things that we see as, as we look in first, uh, the first verse, how wonderful it is, how pleasant for God's people to live together in harmony. So we see that it brings pleasure to the Lord when people walk together in harmony, in unity. So it brings pleasure to the Lord. It makes God, it pleases God when a husband and wife walk together in unity. And what is it like? So here are the two um, analogies it's given. It, it says, it's like the precious anointing oil running down from Aaron's head and beard. So this, uh, you know, this pictures a rich, special blessing. Okay, it is an anoint. It is the anointing. The anointing oil indicates the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So it says, it is like the precious anointing oil running from Aaron's head and beard. So it says, it is the the anointing of the Holy Spirit that that is weaved in the presence of the Holy Spirit when there are two people in unity together. And the next example it gives us, it's like the dew of Mount Hermon falling on the hills of Zion. So here, uh, you know, the, this, the, um, uh, the dew that is on Mount Hermon, okay, now I'm, I'm just telling you a background of this, the dew that falls on Mount Hermon is what actually provides the water supply to the River Jordan, okay? So it's saying that just like the dew of, that falls on Herman gives into the water supply. It pictures a sense of refreshing. It pictures a place of refreshing. So when there are, when there is a husband and wife walking together in unity, it pleases the Lord. It brings about the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it is a place of refreshing. Okay. So uh, we see that this place of unity is is a place of blessing it is a place of life it is a place of the presence of god it is a place where um uh, where there is going to be refreshing so a husband and wife team being together is more powerful and scripturally we see that he commands that blessing and life for those who are in unity together okay so how does this happen? How does this unity happen? We see that when the husband and wife make efforts to walk together, there is a blessing. You will see that, you know, uh, in homes, and, and I've seen, and, and I'm sure we, we, can, um, we can, we have seen examples of this. When they walk together, you will find that there is, uh, you will see that um, you know, the way the family operates together, you know, that there seems to be a blessing in that. The way that that you interact with them, you will begin to see that you feel blessed when you talk to maybe, a, 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 you know, a family where there, there seems unity. You know, even when they're going through struggles, you see a, a blessing as they come together in prayer, come together in support and encouragement, how they build each other up. So a blessing is something that, we will see as promised, you know, when they walk together in unity. So when the husband and wife walk together, uh, what happens is it, it, they, they come to a place of understanding and respecting the differences that they may have or differences of opinions or perspectives that they have when they come together. And as they understand each other and the differences, they use though that understanding to become a good husband and wife team. They don't use what they know as a way to find conflict or a way to quarrel or a way to blame, but they see those differences as something that can add up in building a team together. Okay. 
Or um, another way that we see what really makes a good husband and wife is when they take on the roles that have been given to them. Okay, when they understand and they walk in the roles that God has put uh, put in them, based on whatever whatever God has, placed, you know, that He's divinely placed some of these roles, and when they begin to assume that role, they walk together in unity. They support the other wherever maybe help is needed or they they sometimes need to complement each other and not be again like we said in a place of competition so when they um, understand the roles that they have and they begin to support each other in this role that again is a point that makes um, a good team so we looked at um, you know what makes a good husband wife team we said when they make every effort to walk in a team uh, to work as a team there is a blessing that is over them that uh, you know when they begin to respect their differences or or see that wherever they are being different is good and it adds up to the team that's what builds the team and last and the third point that we were talking about is the roles when we take on the roles understand the roles and support each other through the roles we play that in itself makes a good team all right. Um, we we shall stop for a break right now and come back and continue on with points further on. Right. So you can go grab a coffee, go grab a tea, and we'll meet in ten minutes. Um, in my clock, it's ten fifty-two. We will resume at eleven two. Thank you. See you soon.